Shalom, brothers and sisters and family. Shalom. Welcome to another Sabbath day. I'd like to give a shout out to my Facebook followers, also to my YouTube subscribers, and uh, for those who are getting my messages and lessons on the sons of Jacob.com, welcome also. Uh, I'd like to give a special shout out before I start my Sabbath class to uh, my uh, support, my, my page. If you would like to support the live Sabbath class of the Sons of Jacob, feel free to go on to the, the Sons, www.thesonsofjacob.com, and you can uh, click a link there to go to Amazon.com and purchase my books, or you can Go to Amazon.com and directly purchase my books. Just put a search of the name at the bottom of this book, this name here, and you will bring up my uh, all my books. I have a total of seven on on, on uh, Amazon. Hebrew Instruction Manual is one. Now you can get all of these lessons free on on my pages, but they're just it's going to be hours and hours of uh, viewing. Feel free to do that. You can also purchase the book, which I have written all of these down. Prophet of Israel. All of these lessons you can view free in some form or fashion on my website. But this is a where it, it is grouped together. It would make more sense to view it this way, but you can purchase it this way or you can not spend a dime and go on my website free. Okay. King David. And I have a couple of books of poems that I was writing back in the 90s and that they're available now. Poetic Thoughts of a Young Lion in the Asphalt Jungle. And Spiritual Growth of a Young Lion. Uh, also, I have a book only in a ebook format called Understanding Genesis, The Beginning. All of these books, you can go on uh, Amazon.com they're available for you to purchase. Uh, thank you. Now let me get to my, uh, my message. Shalom, Israel. This includes you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Those of the diaspora dispersed throughout the Americas, Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the islands. Those of the sub-Saharan and transatlantic slave trade. My topic today is... How do the Israelites make it right with the Most High? Again, how do the Israelites make it right with the Most High? Israel, this lesson will show that the Most High God gave His children to their enemies because of their disobedience. And He commanded us to serve them as our gods. This is the situation that we Israelites find ourselves today. When Christ came to redeem us, we were given the recipe. However, most of you are so reliant upon your enemies that you will not hear. The Most High gave his children to the enemies to serve them as a God. The Most High wrote this stipulation in his law, knowing how hard-hearted and stiff-necked his children are. Deuteronomy 2847 Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things because the children of Israel did not want to serve the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as our God for everything that he provided for us including our lands, heritage, culture, and the law which our enemies say we no longer have to keep in order to serve them. Deuteronomy 28 and 48. Now, I'm, I'm 
putting this into context because the fact is, your enemy is your God. They tell you, you don't have to serve, the, you don't have to do no law. You don't have to do your God's law, even though it is written in this Bible, the voice of your God. Oh, they, you know, the law is done away with. And they can't find that nowhere in this Bible. You're God. You're a servant. Therefore, shall not serve thine enemies. Your enemies now are your God. What's the law? He's he about to give you the extent because the fact is, nobody go over to this extent. He's about to give you the extent that you got to serve your enemy. Now, he said that I give you, I, you didn't want to serve me for everything. Now, you're going to go serve your enemies for everything. That makes your enemies your God. Therefore, shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. He ordained your enemies to be against, uh, uh, over you, which the Lord shall send against thee. In hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. The Most High commanded us to serve our enemies to the extent that they became that they become our gods, because we serve them for everything. They are the gods that provide us food, water, clothing, driver's license, hunting and fishing license, birth and death certificates, etc. They are our gods. Whether you want to believe it or not, the Most High God say you serve them as your God because the fact is you don't want to serve me. For everything. When I give you everything, but you don't want to serve me, serve your gods. Every time they put you to death, who you run to? Your gods. Why did this occur? We have an answer for that. Daniels 9 and 7. This is an earnest letter to the Most High God that Daniel wrote. A, a, a prayer to the Most High. Daniels 9 and 7. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces. As at this day to the men of Judah, he's talking about the Jews, the southern kingdom, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, he's talking about Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and some northern kingdom that probably was uh, sprinkled amongst the, the Jews, and unto all Israel, he's talking about the northern king, he's talking about all of them that are near and that are far off. Now, this was around 587 BCE. The northern kingdom had gone, some of them had gone, some of them were still near in the land, and some of them were over here in, in, in North America. They had gone afar off. So he was talking about those. Now, when you, when you look at this, and you could, if you understand how he has written this to, to, for you to understand that he's talking about the Jews who are still in the land. We weren't going anywhere. And he's talking about Israel that are near and that are far off. He ain't talking about across the street over, over Uncle Bobo's house. Through all the countries where the thou has driven them because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. The righteousness of the Most High are his laws, statutes, and commandments that he gave to his children or that they could be as a God like him. Psalms 82 and 6, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Because the southern kingdom, Judah, or Jerusalem, and the northern kingdom, Israel, or Samaria, did not accept the Most High God's righteousness, but want to be like the other nations, we are confused about who we are and who our God is. Allah is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He never says it in the Quran. Never says Allah is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Allah did not deliver the Israelites out of the land of Egypt. Of the Egyptians. Why like Jesus is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob either. 
and in their actions, they don't they don't say it in their actions. White Jesus represents the God of the enemies that the Most High God made us serve because we do not want to serve him. Daniels 9 and 8. O Lord, to us belong a confusion of faces, to our kings, to our prince, to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. Our leaders, fathers, mothers, grandmothers, brothers, cousins, aunts, and uncles are confused about who they are because they do not know who their God is. Daniels 9 and 9. To the Lord our God belong it mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob belongs mercy and forgiveness. But how can the Most High give you mercy and forgiveness when we are continually, continually rebelling against him? John 9, 31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. He can't give you mercy and forgiveness if he can't hear you when you're sinning. Now we know God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doth his will, him he heareth. Now, if you're continually rebelling against the Most High, how can he hear you? You're in sin. Is rebellion against the Most High sin? First Samuel 15 and 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he had also rejected thee from being king. Now this was talking to uh, uh, King uh the first king of, in Israel, before uh, King David, King Saul. Being rebellious is like the sin of rift, witchcraft, similar to idolatry, because you do not believe in the voice of the Most High God. Yeah, it's sin. When you're rebelling, it, it's a sin of idolatry and witchcraft. You know, when you out there, I don't believe that book. Oh, half of that book, no, I don't believe half of it. Man, you 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 in a witchcraft and idolatry, and you don't even know it. Daniel's nine and ten. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in His laws, which He set before us by His servant the prophets. The Israelites do not want to listen to the voice of the Lord or the word of the Most High God. Many will admit that they believe in some of the Bible. But not all of it. This is only because our people do not have any knowledge of the Most High God. Hosea 4 and 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. You don't know God. He tells you that you don't know him. The Lord tells you, us that, the Most High tells us that the Israelites do not have knowledge of him, nor do we abide by the truth. The truth is Psalms 119 and 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Many of you do not abide by the laws of the Most High. This is how you know the Most High. 1 John 2 and 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. How else are you going to know the Most High God? He gave us all of his ways that identifies us as his when we keep his commandments. That's how you know him. When you identify with his commandments and you know his commandments, you know how he acts. That's like you said. You know your father, and you ain't never seen him before. You never stayed in the house with him. You never been around him. You don't understand what ticks him off. You don't understand what keeps him going. You don't understand nothing. Then you say you know your father. Yeah, I know him. First John 2 and 4. He that said, I know him, and keeping not his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. 
you know, if you if you if you in the truth, this this is basically not a, a, an offensive offensive. You, you know, you're lying when you tell somebody that you know somebody when you never met them, and then when somebody give you some things about them, you don't believe it. You lying. You don't know him. What what, what is his favorite food? You know, you you don't you don't know nothing about him. You know, you be you stood you be stood there with your you, uh. What what do you like to do? Who if you know you ask all kinds of things? Yeah. What his favorite colors? What's his favorite shoes? Who is who is his favorite uh singer? And you be sitting there like, uh, well, well, you are, well, at least I met him. You don't know nothing about him, dude. So you might would you just lie? And the truth, the law is the law. The law is the truth. So you don't you don't have no law in you. This is how you do. This is how you do not know the Most High God. You can say that you know the Most High, but you keep none of His laws, statutes, and commandments. Just how you know Him. All the things that specific and particular to Him, peculiar to Him, that He gave to us to make us peculiar, just like Him. Things He don't do. Now, I don't eat that kind of stuff. No, we don't. We don't go out and hunt lizards and eat lizards. We don't eat pork. We don't go out and eat eat shrimp, and crab, and lobster that that we put down on the earth to keep the earth clean. They the boo boo eaters and, and and the dead body eaters. We don't go, you know, you know they out there in the shrimp eat whale dung and all kinds of boo boo. You you go out there catching crabs and lobsters and 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 calling a delicacy. You know, you just got boo boo on the breath. You know, that, that's all it is. You, you know, just got, like I said, I, I, you know, me, I'm telling you, you you, you learn, a, you know, when you're in this truth, you learn a lot about a person when you meet them, when they, you look at their plate and the food that's on it. Oh, hell no. Oh, she ain't not eating doo-doo. What the hell? I, 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 me kiss her? Mm -mm, I'll kiss my own ass. I'll bend all the way over and kiss my booty, and, you know, and fart in my face before I, I let her kiss on me. I don't care how she look. That's, that's foul as hell. That's how I feel right now. You know, you, you eat a, full, a plate of shrimp and lobster. Ooh, that was so good. Mm, no, because that was <laughs> almost threw up watching you eat it. Daniel's 9-11. Yay, all Israel has transgressed. All Israel have transgressed thy law even by the parting, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. This is why it happened. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, this is another thing. The servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Two points I, I, I need to really clear and clearly make, because... The prophet Daniel clearly knew the Most High and knew why the Most High God is offended. He said, yea, all Israel have transgressed his law. They departed, and they didn't want to obey nothing that, that came out of this out of the, the Bible, his voice. And, and everything that was written in the law of Moses. Now, a lot of you Hebrews out there, a, a, a painstakingly go go through and try to create all these new laws and stuff like, oh, marijuana is this and that, and you know, you know, know ye not that you are the temple of God, and, and, and the temple of God dwelleth in you. If any man dis, dis, destroy the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Has nothing to do with you smoking marijuana, but be sober does. So if you out there smoking weed and you out there. Just hide your damn mind. You're violating the law. Because that's too excessive. But the fact is. That has nothing. Because that was not in the law of Moses. Christ didn't say anything about it. 
The Scythians, a lot of them were part of, of, of part, were Israelites. They smoked weed. That's a lot of things that, uh, that, that a lot of you Hebrews uh, call law. But the thing about it is, if it's not written in the law of Moses, Christ did make some changes, but the changes came from the law of Moses. Like adultery. He said, if you look upon a woman with lust in your heart, you have committed adultery in your heart already. But that was a law in the law of Moses. He didn't create new laws except for his priesthood. He created new laws for his priesthood. Apostle Paul helped create those laws. But it didn't have no new commandments in regards to, you know, the things that the Most High God had already mandated in the Old Covenant. It just had something to do with the new priesthood. Let me finish this up. Our leaders, fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers have transgressed the Most High God's law. Is this not where we are today? They have fully accepted their enemies as gods and have departed from the Most High God's laws, statutes and commandments that were written in the law of Moses in the Old Covenant. Daniels 9 and 12. And he had confirmed his word which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil for under the whole heaven had not been done and has been done upon Jerusalem. This is not talking about the, the whole of the, of, of the 12 tribes. He only mentioned the Jerusalem which is talking about the Jews. So the things that were done upon Jerusalem, what was done upon Jerusalem that was that has never been done in the whole under the whole heaven? I'm talking, Dominic. Pay attention. What what are you doing? What's in your hand? Put it down. You what is that? That's what your lesson is. Yes. Now what is done? What what was done upon the whole heaven that was done? Only done in Jerusalem. Only done to the Jews. Slavery. Slavery. We are the only people that went into slavery on slave ships. Nobody else went up into slavery on the slave ship. Now the northern kingdom had some tragedies. But this is not what a Daniel is talking about. He's saying under the whole heaven, the things that were done to us ain't never been done to nobody. Nobody. So, this could be probably why you got some northern kingdoms feeling more privileged than us. Because they weren't as mistreated as we were. That, but, but it's been in their mind so far uh, uh, long ago that they have forgotten about it as well. I'm not saying that they didn't go through some trade. They did, they did because all their men died. This, this white man came upon them and killed killed at, at will. The Most High confirmed his word and brought upon us a great evil that has that has been done only to the Jews. The Most High God is specific here. He used Jerusalem which he associates to the Jews of the southern kingdom. Daniels 9 and 13, as it is written in the law of Moses. Now, we there go, there go again. In the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet may we not our prayer before the Lord our God. We still, didn't, we still not praying today. All of this evil has come upon us, and we still ain't praying for forgiveness and trying to repent and correct ourselves. All this evil, everything that surrounds us is evil. All the things our kids are in is evil. And we're still not hearkening to the voice of God. That, that's, that's what you call hard-hearted and stiff neck. The purpose of the great evil that happened to us 
was to break the yoke from off of our enemies. Let me read Daniel 9 and 13 again. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet may we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand the truth. That we might turn from our iniquities. What is that called? That's now you turning toward your iniquities. Turning away from is what? Repentance. Repentance. So you turn from your iniquities and understand the truth is understanding the law. That's simple. But the fact is, nobody teaches that. You're not going to get this in your Christian church, but we're not talking about the Christian church right here. We're going to keep moving forward. The purpose of the great evil. Second Ezra 6 and 54. After, and after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. Every man, woman, and child upon this earth comes from the Adam that was made in the image of the Most High God. Nor was Adam's direct descendant. The people that the Most High God chose also came from Adam. Isaiah 44 and 1. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Many, including those in this truth, think that all of the descendants of Jacob are chosen. That is not true. Matthew 22 and 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. All are not chosen because they do not serve the Most High God. He said, Jacob my servant. Jacob did what the Most High God, uh, he, he, he did the commandments of the Most High God. That's why the Most High God called him his, his servant. Abraham did the same. Isaac did the same. They were servants of the Most High God. They were chosen. That's why Christ is saying few are called and many, you know, uh, many are called but few are chosen. Keep it, they don't, they, all are not chosen because they do not serve the Most High God, keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments, like Jacob, like King David, like Apostle Paul, like Christ, etc. Everybody is not chosen because you got some that will never keep the commandments of the Most High. Second Ezra 6 and 55. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. The Most High God created this world for the sake of his chosen. But because his chosen rebelled against him and do not want to keep his ways at this moment, it does not seem that way. It don't seem like he, he chose us. Second Ezra 6 and 56. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, they like spit, and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. You got a big bucket of water filled to the brim, and you walking, trying to get it to the, to the, uh, to the destination, and a little bit to fall out on the sidewalk. You don't stop and try to put that little bit of water back in the bucket. You just keep it moving. Oh, hell, I got a whole bucket of water still. It ain't going to cause you to go fill up another bucket just for that little drop. You ain't going to mourn over it. That's how the most I got feel about the other nation. He said they like spit. Now, what the, what the hardening part is, he is now letting those nations that he considered to be spit to ramshot all over it. His chosen. That's what you should be thinking about. Like, dang. He got he got a problem with you. If if this is the this is the problem that the most high God have have with us. He is a willing to let those people that he think is nothing but like spit and like a little bit of water that fall out of a bucket to run stupid ramshot over you because you are so damn stupid and won't listen to him. 
I, I'm not saying this. This is what the Most High God's words are. He said, my people are foolish. Sought his children. They have not known me. Let's see what else he says in, the, in Second Ezra 6 and 57. Now, wait a minute. Let me, let me get picture what is being said here. Your father sees all the other nations to be less than spit, less than a tiny drop of water that spills out of a bucket. Second Ezra 6 and 57. And now, o Lord, behold, these heathens, which have been, which is, have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. Apparently, we have done something tremendously wrong to our God that he allows nations whom he considers to be less than spit, less than a drop that falls from a vessel to rule over us. This is the word that the Most High God has confirmed. This is what Daniel was saying. He, he confirmed this word. Second Ezra 6 and 58. But we thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, the only begotten, and thy fervent lover, are given into their hands. We have been cheating on the Most High for so long that he has become weary of our cheating ways. Jeremiah 3 and 1. They say if a man put away his wife, and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, said the Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you like this. If my wife decides she want to walk out on me and, and go have sex with five or ten men, and I know about it, all the whole neighborhood know about it, did she say she want to come back to me? Oh, no. No, no, no. That's... The Most High God tell you in his word, Deuteronomy 24 and 1 through 4, tell you that, that's a, that, that it's a law telling you that you cannot take your wife back after you divorce her and she, she get married and have, a, a, you know, she get married again and then they divorce or the man dies or whatever. You cannot take that woman back. That's, you, that's an abomination. So the, the Most High God tells you that that's an abomination, but he is willing to take you back after all the cheating that you have done on him. You don't went from God to God. You don't worship Allah. You don't worship white Jesus. You don't worship Buddha. You don't worship all these different gods. You don't black nationalism. You don't with the Christmas tree. And you don't the God of Janus. You don't did all of these different things. He's like, no, come back. I'll take you back. See, he he is more forgiving than all of us because the fact is, we we not like that. This is the kind of cheating that the entire nation has been doing to the Most High God. Each and every time he has taken us back until he said enough is enough and confirmed the curses, the great evils by through Daniel, 2 Ezra 6 and 59. If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? This proves that you are Israel because the real Jews and Samaria have no her have no so sovereign territory that they can call their own. We're living in lands controlled by other nations where our rights are continually violated. This is part of the great evil that the Most High confirmed. How long must we endure? How long are we going to have to do this, O oh Lord? This is this is Ezra. This is around 440, 440 BCE. He's uh, he's. This is a prayer to the Most High. How, how long are we going to endure this? How we got? How long we got to do to do this? We don't even own lands no more. And the world is made for our sake. We don't even own lands where we 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 are sovereign in our land. We taking crap off everybody. How long we got to endure this?
Revelations 2 and 25, this is how long we endure. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. We must endure keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, hearkening to the voice of the Most High, and doing the will, doing His will until Christ returns. Revelations 2 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Those who are hearkening to the words of the Most High and doing all the commandments and statutes and the faith in Christ, we, I'm including myself, will receive the strength to overpower the nations. Revelations 2.27 And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as I receive of my father. We are going to rule these nations harshly just like they are ruling us. When they murder our loved ones, they go home and no charges are filed against them. That's ruling with a rod of iron. You don't see it that way? I do. You rule somebody to the, to the extent of their life and there's nothing done to you. Matter of fact, you got civilians that go out, you know, get the AK-47 or whatever, uh, uh, automatic weapons and go out on a protest and kill kill somebody and, and all these white folk bail them out of jail and, and, and give them three or $400,000 for their defense fund. Maybe a million dollars. So, you know, and, and the people that get upset for me reading the Bible for the things that I'm reading now, why? I'm trying to understand why. They don't get upset when they kill one of us. Most like God is guaranteeing that this is going to happen. I'm going to say I believe what the Bible says. So they have not gotten away. Why y'all want them to get away? Y'all got that slave man, mind. I don't want none of them to get away. All the things that they have done to my forefathers and my foremothers, I don't want none of them to get away. Yeah, dig their ass up. If they if they don't done something rude, wake them up. They're going to pay for it. The great evils began at the abomination that make desolate. I'm bringing this up because the fact is, these are the these are the questions and the answers that you need to know in order to know your God, what ticked them off, and how you can get back with him and understand the things of the day. I'm taking you back. I'm taking you back. I'm then I'm gonna bring you forward. Then I'm gonna show you what we need to do in order to to get back with the Most High. The great evil began at the abomination that made desolate. This abomination that made the Jews desolate occurred more than once. Daniel the prophet referred to it during the Greek captivity. Their practice made us desolate. Christ was referring to the Romans. And they are still making us desolate. Let's get Daniel. Daniel referred to the abomination that made desolate. Daniel's 11 and 30. For the ships of Shittim shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. Alexander the Great came out of this land. Shittim, the ships of Shittim. First, Mac First Maccabees 1 and 1. And it happened. After that, Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian who came out of the land of Shittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his steed the first over Greece. Now this, this tells you a lot. However, Daniel is not referring to Alexander the Greek, but to Antiochus, who went, went against the covenant of the Most High. He went against the covenant of the Most High. 
1 Maccabees 1 and 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to the whole kingdom that all should be one people. We all should be one people means that Antiochus wanted the Jews to be Gentiles too. He knew we had laws that prevented us from being like the heathens. Yeah, because Herodotus had told them. They were studying Herodotus' works. He came to oh, about three or four hundred years before them. He told them, he told them uh, our, uh, the way our behavior. So they already knew how the Jews' behavior were. Exodus 19 and 5. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. In, the, in the other words, most High God is saying, everything that belongs to me, I give it to you. You become just like me. But that if you obey my voice, I'm not going to give you everything to you when you're not, not listening to me. I'm taking everything from you. So, this is his taking. He confirmed his words. All these evil things start happening. And the Oceans did not want the Jews worshiping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Today, they still have the same problem. They have no problem with Jews worshiping Allah or that white Jesus. First Maccabees 142. And everyone should leave his laws so all the heathens agreed according to the commandment of the king. And the Oceans had the audacity to tell you to leave your laws, which is our heritage, and the ways of our Elohim. So he accomplished two things. He wanted you to forget who your God is, leave your laws, and leave the, the likeness of your God. No, leave your laws. You don't need to know nothing about him. The he The heathen laws has nothing to do with their gods. They don't have laws that, that reflect who their God is. Our laws does. Our laws do. It reflect who our God is. First Maccabees 143. Yea, many also the Israelites consented to his religion. This is a religion. And sacrifice unto idols and profane the Sabbath. This is the same identity crisis that the Jews have today. We reject our heritage, worshiping their gods, voting in their political races. That's a religion. Clubbing, partying, and buying on the Sabbath day. Many of you love their gods making that turkey, beef, chicken, and ham sacrifices on Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, 4th of July, etc. Y'all, y'all, like I'm saying, y'all can't wait to do that. You are sacrificing to a god whether you know it or not. And the fact is, many of the Israelites, as, as many of you are today, could not wait to leave your laws and start violating the Sabbath day. Here it is right here. 1 Maccabees 144. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land. Antiochus was against the covenant of the Most High. Verse 45. And forbid burnt offerings and sacrifices and drink offerings in the temple and that they should profane the Sabbath and festival days. Antiochus forbid the Jews from worshiping the Most High God in any way. We were not allowed to keep the Sabbath. Today we voluntarily profane the Sabbath and feast days. We, we voluntarily do it. You, you know, People know that the Sabbath day is on Saturday. They're still not going to stop. So they violated on purpose. Without a, without a purpose at all. 1 Maccabees 146. And pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Verse 47. Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts. There is no knowledge of the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Our people do not put a difference between clean and unclean. 
holy and profane. Ezekiel 22 and 26. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed differences between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths and I am profane among them. We, you know, majority of, of, of the Jews and the Northern Kingdom go to church on the wrong day. That's hiding your eyes from the Sabbath. Because on the Sabbath, you are not in the presence of the Most High. Hiding your eyes. First Maccabees 148. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and prof profanation. We could not even circumcise our children. This is the type of grip that this so-called white man has on our community. They, be they became our gods more so now. First Michael B's one forty. let me explain, more so now? They have became our gods more so now because the fact is they, like I said, in all, if you want to get out, if you want to get out of uh, out of the hood, you're gonna have to connect to some white man, some white group. You know, you're gonna have to do it in entertainment, connect with some white man who's gonna rob you blind. Still, all you still, you know, if you you you're in hip hop or R and B or whatever, you're a singer or a rapper or in entertainment, they're gonna steal all your masters. You you gonna make a little money, but they gonna make the most money, and they gonna get their families and their grandkids and their great grandkids paid off of what you, off of what you did. Every time you get the greatest hits or whatever, they they control the masses. They might give you a couple of cents on the uh, on every album per album, per, a couple of cents per album. What do you think the rest of that money going to? And when the album costs a, a thirteen fourteen dollars a, a, a DVD. A, C, a, a CD or whatever they uh, they on DVDs or CDs now they 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 print these things or you can get them on on, on uh or you can put them on, on digitally uh, automatically that's that's what I recommend all y'all doing you know if, if you're gonna get into music or something just put your stuff on the internet pump it out you, you like I said there was a guy that that uh that I was listening to he said you have multiple sites get you a website get you a YouTube page get you a Facebook page. And have your music on, on there to, to sell and get get you like a SoundCloud or whatever else. Put have it available for all on all of those uh, those various networks. If you sell, I'm gonna tell you like this: if you sell a hundred thousand CDs that way and don't have nobody else involved in your in your money, you make a hundred percent of what of what is ex uh, minus expense. No white man involved. That is equivalent to you uh, selling a million or more. With a white man involved, because you're gonna make less with a white man involved when you when you sell over a million, because you're not gonna get no more than 10, 15 cents, and that's that's a good contract. Most will say, man, that's a good contract. You get 15 cents on the dollar. No, you, if you sell your own stuff, you got your own master. You print your own stuff. Nobody control none of that stuff. You sell your own own DVDs and like a thing. You you have the right to print and. and and not print just like that's why they upset with Kev Williams, because he he paid for all of his comedy re specials. No no white man owned none of his stuff. So you know you know like the Dave Chappelle and all of those you know they had white folks uh, and everybody else behind that. You know uh, Kev Williams is the only one that paid for his uh, his he produced it, paid for it. So nobody can come in and say, you know what? When well, we release it on YouTube or Netflix, no, you can't do that. Own it a hundred percent. That's what that's what that's what black man needs to start focusing on, keeping the white man totally out your business. I don't give a damn if he can. Oh, I, you know, you only sold a hundred thousand, but I can get it to millions. I don't give a damn. Cause those hundred thousand right there. I make I guarantee you I made more money on that hundred thousand than you than you would guarantee me guarantee me on a million. Selling a million. Guaranteed. And then they own your ass. You gonna sell you're gonna sign a contract where they own you. 
No, I own. I have freedom to do what the hell I want to do. I can breathe, and I don't need your your ass around me nowhere. So next time you come around me, I'm gonna stick my dog on you. <laughs> All right, let's get let's get it moving. Okay. Let's get the reason why all of these things Antiochus wanted us to do so that we could understand our present situation. First Maccabees 149, to the end, they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. That's what the white man wanted to do. Wanted you forget your God, the law, which is he is the law and the law is him because the law is his ways. You forget the law and the ordinance and change the ordinances. So they brought their ordinances in and they changed everything. So right now, we have forgotten the, forgotten the law, forgotten our God, and then they're telling you that their God says the law is done away with because not our God. I, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he never said that. And everybody, if you ask them who, which God said that, with God, with God, the, the laws are done away with. What? Which God said that? And where do you find that in, in the print on the Bible? The main reason that Antiochus imposed all this is that the Jews might forget the laws of the Most High God. First Maccabees one and fifty, and whosoever would not do according to the commandments of the king, he said he should die, put him to death. If you don't, they don't want to do what I asked them to do, put them to death. This is what you call the abomination that makes desolate. Daniel's 11 and 31. And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that make desolate. This is exactly what Antiochus did when he came into Jerusalem taking all the Most High God's things out of the temple, then sending out a letter saying, let us all be one people. Christ spoke of an abomination that makes desolate also. Let's see which one, because this is, Daniel was speaking about Antiochus. When he came in our sanctuary, took all the Most High God's things, and he made it desolate, bringing pork and everything else, and they call it the, 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 the Temple of Olympus and everything. They made that place desolate. So when the Maccabees took it back over, they had to rededicate that temple, rebuild the, uh, the altar and everything because it had, uh, they were sacrificing pork fl uh, flesh and all kinds of stuff on that, on that uh, altar. So they had to destroy that altar and rebuild a new altar. So Christ spoke up. Now, now this happened. Uh, Amiosius was around 170, like 174 to like 163 or 60 something. He lasted for to about 160 something BCE. Now, Christ came upon the scene around 5 AD. 4 5 AD. And, and he, he probably died he died before he, he was 30. So he probably didn't last around uh around 30 30 AD. Uh, 34 AD. So this was way after. So this was not the, Christ and Christ and Daniel were not talking about the same instance they were talking about the same people at different periods now let's see what period christ was talking about mark 13 and 14 but when ye shall see the abomination of desolations spoken of by daniel the prophet standing where it ought not let him that read it understand that let them that be in judea flee to the mountains now Abomination of desolation standing where they ought not refers to a man or nation standing in a place where they should not. 
Let us look directly at what Christ is referring. Those in charge of the Roman Catholic Church or any church with the King James Bible, this Bible does not apply to them. So they are standing right there where they ought not. They don't have nothing to do with our Bible. So if, if you're looking just at the instance in when, when they were standing in the temple in Jerusalem, you're looking too narrow. They're standing right today where they ought not. What do they have to do with our Bible? What do they have to do with the word of God that has nothing to do with them? Standing where they ought not. Acts 5.29 Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Instead, they have taken control of our book, incorrectly teaching a doctrine that is not of the Most High, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but of Satan. This is the Edomites standing where they ought not. Acts 5 and 30, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on the tree. The God of our fathers is possessive. It is not referring to the whole world. Acts 5, 31, him that God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. Christ was exalted by the Most High God to give repentance to the Israelites. The Romans took over our doctrine and are, and are misteaching it, standing where they ought not. Mark 13 and 15, and let them that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of the house. This precept is describing the urgency to flee away from those who are pursuing you, because these enemies hate you and are coming to destroy you. There's no time to go into the house and gather some things. This is the same enemy today. Instead, many of you flee over to your mother, girlfriend, or cousin's house. You do not understand how this enemy wants you dead. Leviticus 26 and 17. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursue you. Those who hate the Israelites rule over us. The Most High God did this because you do not want to hear his voice or do his commandments. Y'all, 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 uh, y'all are just simple. When you got an enemy that hates you and wants you dead, and you just go over to your cousin's house, maybe they don't know. Man, they got every like I said, when when they put a bolo out on you, they they, they look up phone records and everything in your name. They're gonna find out who you are, who you call, in every place that you call or talk to. They're going to want, they, like I'm saying, they're going to tap those phone lines. They're going to tap whoever. And, and, and any of y'all that got warrants and all this other stuff, oh, they're going to, they definitely going to help. And all y'all talking about snitching and, and this and snitching that, oh, you niggas going to be snitching. Excuse the, excuse the language with niggas in the Bible. All y'all going to be snitching. Snitches get stitches. Yeah, until you until your ass get in trouble. When that white man come and tell he gonna put your ass in jail, you violating a parole and all this stuff, and he and he lock you up, put you in holding for 48 hours. You you start singing like a damn canary. Simple, simple eight Negroes, then you want to impose on everybody else. The camps of Pharisees and Sadducees that sit in Moses' seat. We're returning back to the Most High right now. Israelite camps are teaching the law. Should you listen to their instructions? Now, I'm going to read something because Christ said it. And I'm going to ask you who it referred to. A, the Christian church. B, the, the, Hebrew, the Hebrew churches. Us. Let's see, nobody. A D, all of the above. Okay. Matthews 23 and 1. 
Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples. So he was speaking to everybody. In Jerusalem, this is what Christ told his disciples and multitude of his people who listened. Matthew 23 and 2, saying, The scribe and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Christ acknowledged that the scribe and Pharisees who were trying to kill him were sitting in the position of judges of the law. Matthew 23 and 3. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Hmm. Today, this is identified with the camps who are behaving like Pharisees in their works. Do what they say, because, yeah, they are teaching the law. However, as Christ said about the Pharisees and Sadducees, they're correct in bringing out the law, teaching the Israelites, but their works are not according to the law. They don't do what the, what the, what the works are according to the law. Yeah, do what they say, because they are teaching the law. You know, Deuteron 22 and 5, a woman shall not wear that which pertaineth to a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination. You know, the swine, though it be cloven-footed and, and chewed the cud. You know, it is not clean. It is unclean unto you. Yeah, that that's, that's law. He said, do as they say, because they are bringing out the law. So the fact is, by you throwing the baby out with the bad water and not listening to all, to their works, do as they say because the, they, they are teaching the law, but don't do their works. Mm. Matthew 23 and 5, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. They are on the corner shouting at their people and heathens alike, being seen of men. This is not what the Most High commanded. Ezekiel 3 and 11. And go, get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them and tell them, Thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. The Most High commands his servants to go to his people and say, Thus said the Most High God, whether they listen or not listen. This is one thing that many of you camps get wrong. The Most High did not tell his servants to go to the other nations and speak to them. That is just one misstep. Are you willing to accept Christ? I ask this question because many of you are acting like Pharisees who sit in Moses' seat, teaching the law, only to gather members into your camp. That is not the pathway back to the Father. In the following precepts, Christ was dealing with the Pharisees who sat in Moses' seat, who somewhat knew the law. They were not like the so-called Christian church who were void of understanding. Now, Christ was talking about the Pharisees and scribes who knew the law. He wasn't talking about the Christian church who, who, who don't teach the law. They don't teach the law. There's a, there are very few Christian, so-called Christian churches out here that teaches the law. He is not telling you to, to do what they say. He's telling you to do as the those who are teaching the law, who sit in Moses' seat and, and, and teach the law. We're going to get into uh, what Christ was dealing with, with his own people, and also with, with, with Edomites. I'll, I'll show you when he was talking to Edomites, and then he was talking to his own people. John 8.31 Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciple indeed. All the Jews were not involved in persecuting Christ as many in the so-called Christian church would have you believe. No, everybody, it was not a uh, every Jew killed in Christ. No, it was multitude following Christ. It was just the just these so-called leaders. Matthew sixteen and twenty one. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders 
and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. So now Christ knew that the elders, the, the chief priests, and the scribes were going to be the ones pursuing his life. It will, it will be no different today. Elders and camp leaders are against the doctrine of Christ, but hold the doctrine of the Pharisees. They do not oppose the law. However, they are not doing the work according to the precepts. John 8.32 And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The law is the truth. You will know the law, and the law will make you free. Psalms 119, 142. Again, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. If you do not know the law, then you are chasing the things of this world. Too busy watching your favorite basketball, football, or soccer team, or your favorite movie, or hip-hop star, etc. John 833. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed. Now, this is the one first, this is the first thing that let you know that these are not the Jews. We be Abraham's seed. Why did they not say we be Jacob's seed? They answered him, We be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. No Jew could say that. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Now, these are some white folks in the temple where they ought not. In the, in, De desolation and what is abomination that makes desolate they are already in our temple when Christ had warned us here they are right here speaking it, on things that they ought not trying to trying to be part of us this is how white folks act today if you had noticed they always try to be part of who you are or whatever just to just to, just to steal from you You know, they want to be you in terms of your swag and stuff, but they don't want to be you in terms of your color. Because they can stop being you anytime they want to and go back home, put on a suit, and get in their BMW and roll, roll the hell off. They ain't got they ain't got to stay you. You're going to have to stay you. They're going to exploit the hell out of you. They're going to come around you with your with their gear on, with their pants sagging, and, 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 you know, talking all uh, thuggish just like most of, the, most of the, the brothers do. But when they get what they want, they gone. They can they can gut their hair and and, 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 and do all this other stuff. Put their, get in their BMW and, and go in, go, you know, go in the suburbs. Now let's see what these these suckers said. They answered him, "We be Abraham's seed." They didn't say we be Jacob's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. Jews could never say that. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Among these Jews were those calling themselves Abraham's seed. Esau is Abraham's seed, and they have never been in bondage to any man. The Jews could not say this, since we at that time, at this time, were in captivity to the Greeks and not the Romans. Judges 8.34 Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Surely, surely, I say to you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. He just didn't call him the devil. He just used the servant of sin. All of you committing sin against servants become servants to the sin you are committing. When you are committing adultery, lying about your whereabouts and what you are doing is involved. You become a servant to it. Because if you're committing adultery and your wife or your husband asks you, hey, babe, where you been? You you already lying. You got you can't tell her that. Oh, I've been over my boyfriend. Uh, you know my girl over my girl's house. You know, and you know me and her been getting down all 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 afternoon while you was at work or while you at home. Oh, I can answer the phone because me and her were getting down. You're a servant of sin, so you lying because lying is a sin. You can't tell your wife that you've been you know doing that or your your husband that you've been doing you know sleeping with another man. So. Yeah, you're a servant of sin. You're a murderer. You have to create all an alibi and maintain innocence when you are actually guilty. You're going to have to keep all them lies together. Because when the police get, get a trail on you and start asking you questions, you're going to have to log about where everything, where you was. 
you go, you gonna have to create a log of, and, and remember every step by step everything, every, you know every place you've been. John eight thirty five and the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided ever. When you are a servant to sin, you will fall out of favor to the Most High God. But Christ will always be in favor to the Father. John 8.36 If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Christ is telling you his authority is. He's telling you what his authority is. John 5.22 For the Father judges no man, but had committed all judgments unto the Son. The Most High gave the authority on earth to his Son. Those who are saying only God can judge, they're incorrect. You don't know, that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to tell you, you do not know the most high God because God ain't judging you. Only God can judge. No. no. Most high God, this is this precept, John 5, 22, been in the Bible forever. He gives the authority to his son to judge. He, he got, most high God ain't coming down to judge you when Christ returns. Christ is going to be the judge. John 8.37 I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because, because my word had no place in you. Now this is more telling than, than, than what he, they said at first. We be Abraham's seed and have not been in bondage to any man. Christ is telling them that my word got nothing to do with you. Christ is not talking, not only talking to the Pharisees' leaders, but also to Esau. The words that Christ was speaking and the kingdom of heaven did not benefit them. Kingdom is not for them. John 8.38 I speak that which I have seen with my father and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Christ is saying that these people that he is speaking have a different father than him. 1 John 3 and 8 he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. A sinful person who is always involved in committing sin is of the devil. This person could be your mother, father, sister, or brother, closest of kin. Christ came to expose the works of Satan and show you the law, how, he, how we Israelites should walk. This is what, what he did because the devil, they came, they were the desolate that make, they were the abomination that makes desolate. They came into our temples, made us forget the law. So Christ was trying to correct that. John 8.39, then answered and said unto him, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. This is why Apostle Paul identified the chosen, which are not all of Abraham's seed. Identifying the chosen of Abraham's seed. See, these conversations bleed over into what the apostles and the disciples were talking about. Because Abraham, uh, Apostle Paul did a full chapter in regards to the chosen of the Most High God and, and excluding those like these who say we be Abraham's seed. He made it, it intentionally to exclude them and just exclude them numerically. Romans 9 and 6. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. When Antiochus decreed that all nations, including the Jews, should be one people, many of the Jews agreed. All of you were born in Israel. Does that mean you are, are Israel when you do not want to be Israel? We can't make you be Israel. All of you listening to, this, to my voice right now, and you don't want to be Israel, you're not Israel. Just You, you can go back to sleep. Lie down and take a nap because all of you are not Israel. 
And, and, that, and that's more than one way. Just because you were born of Israel doesn't make you Israel because you could be a tear, born of another nation, and have a, a, a Israelite mother. So it's, it's got two, three meanings. You could be a Israelite mother and father that but don't want to be Israel. And you're not going to get the kingdom. You're not Israel. Just going back to sleep and lay down. Romans 9 and 7. Neither, because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children. But in Isaac shall they, thy seed be called. Abraham had a lot of kids. Abraham had many children. He had he had uh, Ishmael by Hagar. He had six kids, six sons by Keturah. And he had children by concubines. He sent them away from Isaac, giving them gifts, but gave Isaac all that he owned. Let's get that proof. Genesis 25 and 5. See, Abraham had other kids by, when, when, when Sarah died, he had kids by concubines and Keturah. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. Genesis 25 and 6. But unto the sons of the concubines, plural, concubines, plural, which Abraham had. He had concubines. Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac, his son. While he yet lived eastward unto the east country. Abraham lived to be about 175 years old. He still got down and he had kids by concubines and he sent all of them away. He gave them probably some money and stuff so that they can live and survive. But he, he sent them away from Isaac. No, y'all can't be around here. I don't want y'all keeping them no trouble with Isaac. Abraham had children by Keturah and concubines, sending them away while he was alive. He knew Isaac was a chosen seed. Romans 9 and 8. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Only those. Do not think all of your children are chosen. Just because you were born of Israel does not make you Israel. And that goes for you today. Just because you're a Hebrew, your wife a Hebrew, don't make your children, go, all your children going to be counted for the seed. Just like Abraham. Abraham was perfect in the eyes of the Most High God. And he had plenty of kids. All of his kids were not counted for the seed, for the chosen. What do you think about yours? Doesn't make your children counted for the seed. They... You know, they born of Israel, they of Israel, but they ain't counted. All of them are not. You can just only pray that, that they get the kingdom or not, but the fact is, all of them are not. Romans 99. For that is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. The promise seed came through Sarah, which is Isaac, excluding Ishmael. Now, he's telling you who the, the woman is. Sarah had only Isaac. Okay, so that excludes Keturah and Ishmael. Romans 9 and 10. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, our father possess it. We journeyed to Rebekah, who had two sons, Esau and Jacob, by their father Isaac. Romans 9 and 11. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand. Not of works, but of him that called it. The Most High elected one of them, one of these sons, before they were born. In the womb, he elected one of the children. Verse 12, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. Verse 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. The Most High elected Jacob or Israel. He hated Esau even in the womb. You know, because Esau is Cain re regenerated who killed Abel. 
But the fact is, that's another story, and, 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 and that lesson has been done a number of times by myself. Uh, if you like, you can look at uh, Understanding Genesis, the beginning, part one, uh, in, in one of my videos, or you can go to my uh, go to go to Amazon.com. You can purchase the uh, ebook Understanding Genesis, the beginning, to get a better understanding. John eight forty two. And this is the conversation that Apostle Paul had. I'm, I'm sure it has to do with this conversation of the Romans trying to come in on a ter territory, trying to say that they're, they're a part of Israel. We be Caesar Abraham that makes us Israel. No, Apostle Paul excluded them. And he numerically went down and excluded Ishmael, excluded all the Keturah's children, they're the children of the flesh. He excluded everybody, Esau. Everybody is saying that the Most High God hated Esau, as is written. Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. So they're in the they're they're in the abomination that makes desolate. And what do you think the Most High God has to do with them? They got our books in their hand, established the Roman Catholic Church with the premise of our book. They are the abomination that makes desolate because all the things that they're set up is making us desolate right now today. If you can't look at it that way, then I'm trying to understand what's what your spirit is made of. John 8 42. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. You know that you are in this truth when the world when the world hates you for speaking the truth. You're not the first. John 15 and 18. If the world hates you, ye you know that it hated me before it hated you. The world includes some of your, your family who are in agreement against the Bible and the laws of the Most High. Because they're going to hate with the words, they're going to hate the things that Christ said, they're going to hate the things that in this book, the law. You know, you, you start telling people about homosexuality in, 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 in the book, you know, it's it's a, a, a Levitical law, a law of Moses. You start telling them about things like that, they're going to hate you. Because that's not that's not how the world is made. Because you can't even speak out against homosexuality in this world no more. You lose your job, you know, if you're a professional uh, athlete, you lose your contracts and everything. They'll, they'll drop you from a team in a heartbeat. John 8.44, ye are of your father, the devil. He already called him the devil. And the lust of your father ye would do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Here, you know that Christ was referring to Cain, who murdered his brother, Abel, then lied about it. First John 3 and 12, not as Cain who was of that wicked one and slew his brother and wherefore slew he him because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. You, 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 he getting mad because your brother righteous, you know, that's how, that's how people are today. If you are in a righteous stance in favor with your father or your mother, and, and, and your brother or your sister is always out of favor with them for the things that they do, they're going to hate the brother for it or the sister for it, for being right. Oh, you just a, a mama's boy. You just, no, I'm just doing what mama told me to do. I ain't trying to get no no, no sweat from her and I ain't trying to get, get make her mad. She got a lot of other things on her mind. Why should I not do what she say do? I love my mama. You love your mama? If my mama told me, look, you know, uh, do your homework, you know, get, get, clean your room up, you know, you start a load of clothes and get those clothes folded up, you know, the clothes in the dryer, get them out and, and fold them up. Okay. Ain't gonna be, no big deal. Take no time to do it. I get it done, you know, do my homework, do a load, get put a load of clothes in the laundry. It ain't, it ain't like I have to stand there and wash it with my hand with the rubber board in the tub. Hell, y'all don't even understand washing clothes like that. See, I do. 
I don't been through that. None of my kids don't understand. If I if I put a, if I put a, some clothes in a bathtub and get, put a rub board there and, and, and put some washing powder in there, they'll lose their damn mind. They to wash all their clothes that way. Bring them out and go take them out in the backyard and put them on the clothesline. Cain regenerated back upon the earth as Esau was wicked from the beginning because Cain hated Abel because Abel was righteous. We have these type of Cains in our families who hate their own brothers or sisters just because they are righteous. They do what their mother and their father say. They don't cause a lot of problems with their parents. They try to do the things that are right in the eyes of, of, of the community. You're just goody two-shoes. You this, you that. No. That's how I like to live my life. I ain't trying to cheat and steal on people. John 8.45 And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. This, this is our people. A lot of, I, I lie to you and you believe every word I say. I can just sit there and lie, just like these pastors in these churches. They can sit there and just take all your money and they just lie in their ass off. Nothing they say is, is pertaining to this Bible. They give you a bu bunch of baloney about their life, you know, farming hogs or something. This is our people. We are so easy to believe a lie from over the truth. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. Our people are asleep, believing lies and refuse the truth. Take it Thessalonians 2 and 12. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. If our people remain in these delusions until the end, then their souls are damned. John 8, 47. He that is of God heard God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Verse 51. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my sins, he shall never see death. Verse 52. Then said the Jews unto him. Now the Jews are speaking. Now it was Esau. Now here come the Jews. Then the Jews said unto him. Now we know that thou has a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou said, if a man keep my sins, he should never taste of death. Verse 53. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead. Whom makest thou thyself? Whom makest thou thyself? This is Esau standing where he ought not. The Jews had in common Jacob, but Esau has in common Abraham. They had began taking control of our temples at this time. John 8.56 Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Notice that Christ used your father instead of our father. Abraham was his father also. Christ did this because he did not want to be associated with Esau. No, your father, your, your father was he saw he saw me and rejoiced. John 8.57 Then said the Jews unto him. Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? The Jews are now talking to Christ. You have the abomination that makes desolate standing where they ought not, and the Jews conversing with Christ. John 8, 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was I am. So I was there before Abraham. That's what he told him. No, before Abraham came about, I was there. This pissed them off because the fact is, they did not believe in nothing. And, 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 we, and we have people right now in our books, Hebrews in our books, that don't believe this Bible. They, they, you know, they believe the law, the law, they understand the law, they believe the law, but they don't believe anything in this Bible. Esau did not fully understand prophecy, neither did the Jews believe in the Bible. This is the same position that many of us take today. How do we make it right? 
The Most High placed us into captivity to punish us for our wrongdoing. His goal was not for us to join up with the heathens and become one people. He placed us here to repent, to hear his voice, and do his laws, statutes, and commandments. How we make it right? 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? If you are in this truth pursuing righteousness, then you are not supposed to be connected to people who are in the world. It does not matter if they are your mother, father, brother, or best friend. It doesn't matter. I, I, I'm gonna say this because it's it's a lot of y'all that's in this in this faith. Yeah, y'all 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 keep the Sabbath, but y'all hang out with your heathen brothers and cousins and, and and stuff like that. That's still in the streets. You can't be unequally yoked. This truth represents a sword. Matthew ten thirty four. Think not that I come to come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Christ did not come with a with a can we all get along message. This message is one of the vision. He 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 did away with that one people. We we're not one people. We're peculiar to the Most High God when we obey His voice. This is what He came to teach. Y'all y'all in the wrong light. Leviticus 20 and 26, And ye shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy, and have severed you from other people, that ye should be mine. That's what Christ came to do, to sever you from all other people. So when you get into this truth, you cannot be unequally yoked together with people who are not in this truth. It might break your heart that your mother don't believe. So be it. If you, if you love God more than you love your mother, Love your mother. You gonna have to drop her, or your dad. Love, if you love God more than you love your dad, he is dropped. You got to stand firm and say, you know what, I, I'm firm on this. So, dad, you know you can do your thing on the Sabbath, but I'm I'm taking this Sabbath and I'm worshiping the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You can go away with that bull crap. Don't come back on Sabbath either. I got to bang you all the way from my house keep or keep my kids uh, not listening to all that crap that you be talking. I will. Matthew 10, 35. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The world will hate you as well as your family who are in the world. They despise this law and want to stay in the perversion the perversions that they are visiting. There are laws against homosexuality, adultery, sleeping with the closest of kin, sleeping with a mother and her daughter, etc. You think those who are involved in these activities, including your family, will like you when you show them their faults? You do not necessarily have to be discussing them, but bringing out the law will convict, convict them in their hearts. You know, this law book sometimes convicts people and you don't even know that it's convicting them because the fact is it's just the spirit that most High probably gave you gave you them those verses, those precepts to bring out, and it'll probably be talking directly to that person. And you don't you don't even know it. You be like, you know that. You just bring out stuff that, you know, that within your spirit to bring out. Matthew 10, 36, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Those in your own family would oppose you the most. Matthew 10, 37, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. When you get in this truth, you cannot love anybody more than you love the law. Christ did not say this and not follow it himself. This is Mark 3.32. And the multitude said about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brother, brethren without, seek for thee. Christ was teaching the multitude of his people 
doing the will of the father. And while he was teaching, someone told him that his mother and brothers were outside wishing to speak to him. Mark 3.33. And he answered them saying, Who is my mother? Or my brethren? He asked the multitude, who was his mother and brother? It was not a misery to him, as if he did not know. Verse 35, for whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. Christ is not dealing with relationships of the Elohim. He's not dealing with the relationships of the flesh, but of the spirit. John 4, 24, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So Christ is not dealing with uh, fleshly relationships. He don't give a darn about the flesh. And when you get in this truth, you can't give a darn about the flesh. You're the only thing involved in spiritual matters. It makes sense that you have a spiritual mother and father, brother and sisters, because you know what? All your all your family is not going to make it in the kingdom. So it makes sense that you have a spiritual mother, spiritual brother, spiritual sisters. Because you no know, a lot of your a lot of your people are not going to make it in the kingdom. One to, one to a city, two to a family. Second Corinthians six and fifteen. And what concord had Christ with Bilal? Or what part had he that believed it with an infidel? Christ did not have agreement with Satan, nor should you with unbelievers or those that believe in other gods. If they, believe, if they worship in other gods and doing that Christmas thing and that, that Thanksgiving thing and that Easter thing, you, most of God, what, what fellowship? You know, most of God don't make agreements with those people. You shouldn't make agreements with them either. You do just like Christ did. Christ gave you a footprint for you to follow. You don't, you don't make agreements with them. You know, you don't get tripped up because the fact is, you're going to get tripped up. Oh, man. I, I, oh, you don't hear drinking no grocery. Hey, man, I, I bring you some food over, man. You know, and you forget it's Thanksgiving. He bring you, you know, some turkey and all kinds of stuff that he, he cooked for Thanksgiving. And you don't forget. You got tripped up. 2 Corinthians 6 and 16. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God had said. I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. You are the temple of the Most High God, and you should keep your temple clean and holy. 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? In the New Testament, or the New Covenant, the Most High does not dwell in buildings made with hands. Acts 7, 48. How be it, the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as said the prophets. What do you think the Holy Ghost is? Many of you are going into these buildings, but if the Holy Ghost is not in you, then the, Holy, then the Most High is not present. He is definitely not present when you are worshiping him on the wrong days. This includes you Hebrews who are following the doctrine of man and not after the Most High. You would definitely be the one saying, Lord, 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 thinking you're doing righteous, but you're not listening to a word nobody said. Are you not, you know, you're telling everybody else to fact check, but y'all ain't fact checking nothing because you think you're so righteous. You know, I, I will take heed to anybody that bring out precepts that, that makes sense. That's righteous. According to, to according to this Bible. But fact is, yeah, I listen to you, Hebrew, because y'all do bring out the law. But the fact is, I don't I don't do your works. I don't follow your works. Second Corinthians 6 and 17. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. This is where you camps are in error. You refuse to come from among your oppressors. You are content with hollering on corners, 
but not creating programs to stop Hebrew depending, Hebrews depending on their oppressors. The Most High is telling you to physically come from among them, separate yourselves, even from your relatives who want to stay in the world. You are not ready for the kingdom because you camps are too busy being Pharisees. 2 Corinthians 6 and 18. And we'll be a father unto you, and ye shall be my son and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. The Most High will receive you when you spiritually and physically step away from your oppressors. Y'all don't want to do that. Because the fact is, you want to tell people what the law says, which Christ said, yeah, we're supposed to, you know, y'all sit in Moses' seat. Y'all are, are the one bringing out the law. But don't follow your work. Your work is, is, is trash because you're not coming from among them. You haven't created a program so that y'all can talk about WIC and all these other programs that this white man has created to keep, keep black men out of the, out of the household. What are y'all doing? Y'all are staying separate among yourselves. The kind of bull crap that y'all be doing, I'm like, we never going to be able to uh, stand up. We, we got to create programs ourselves so that when that white man decides to move his stuff away, we just say, go ahead on. Take your stuff out of our community. We don't want your shots. We don't want the COVID-19. We don't want none of that. Most I tell you to come from among them. Old covenant tell you you don't want to, you don't make no covenants with them. You don't he don't want them in the land. So whatever land that we're supposed to be getting out amongst ourselves, they shouldn't even be next door to us. Nowhere near us. And this this is stuff that you can read every day to 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 to, to, to you camp Hebrews and y'all don't seem to understand what the most high God is requiring us to come away from these people. But y'all too busy because y'all 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 are tied up in, in the same stuff that y'all be screaming at others about being tied up in. Now y'all probably not eating pork and all this other stuff, but oh LeBron James, what he do last night? Uh uh, you did you see that game last night? Man, nobody give a damn about a game. Man, nobody gives a damn two two craps about it. You know, I don't know none of these rappers or none of these people that be walk be be, be out there rapping. I don't I don't even buy into it. I very seldom listen to the radio. I'm I'm serious about the most high God's work and, 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 and what he what he tells us to do. Un unfortunately I don't have thousands and thousands of followers. Because the fact is, you know, you know, like as Christ said, know that they hate you. They hated me first. Even amongst my own people. I know they're gonna hate me because the things I, I tell them they, 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 it's not gonna be something that they're gonna like. Not even among you Hebrews, who call yourself righteous, but, but but as Christ said, the Pharisees and scribes they sit in Moses' seat, do as they say. Y'all do bring out the law. You be on the corner. A lot of y'all do bring the law, but your work is is trash. I'm gonna keep saying that. Zechariah 2 and 1 is not gathering together in your damn camp. I, I, I'm seeing that one of you one of you camps get serious about Zechariah 2 and 1. You haven't made any efforts toward that. And you know, I, I'm not talking about the, the, the things that you are doing in, in, in captivity, you know, when, when Jeremiah, when, 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 when the people, the Jews were in, in captivity under the Babylonians and Jeremiah wrote a letter to them and telling them, you know, build ye houses, plant you gardens, marry your kids and things like that, that applies today. But, you know, we're not in that type of captivity. But the fact is, it was still a system so that we remain together. Make sure you, you, you marry righteous people. Righteously don't marry among the heathens. It, it, it was things that was said like that. Things that when we came out of Egypt, we don't. I don't want nobody living in the land that's not of Israel. That applies today. 
But you guys want to be so historical, but you're not doing you're not searching the right history. It's fine learning the other history stuff, but the things in the Bible, that's the history you're supposed to be learning and doing. Oh, that's that's supposed to be part of the fiber that you are you are following today. Anyway. My lesson. How do the Israelites make it right with the Most High? By doing his commandments and doing his statutes and doing his laws, doing as he say. You know, not being a Pharisee. Eventually, I'm going to get people to listen. When the Most High guys say it's time, people will listen. That's what I'd say. That's what I'm going to I'm going to continue. It might take five, six hundred lessons, maybe a thousand. Somebody will hear. It. And we will build with or without you. Anyway, again, my channel, my website, www the sons of Jacob.com. You can go there. You can access all of my lessons free of charge. It would, it would get, send you to YouTube, but you can access my lessons free of charge. And you can go to, uh, you can also purchase my books to support this class. And I do sell soaps on that, on that site as well. Uh, you can go to my live, L I V E, Shabbat, S H A B B A T class. That's, that's my YouTube, uh, page and you can go to the at sign live l-i-v-e shabbat s-h-a-b-b-a-t class all one word on facebook uh feel free but you can go to uh, amazon.com pull up the, uh, the name this this name here